So here I have just 10 slides, but the file size, if I press F12 to save as, is actually 165 megabytes, which is absolutely huge. Now I have got video files in this and images, as you can see. Um, the ones that have the star, those are the ones with videos. But essentially, we can reduce this substantially if we use the right methods. Usually the culprits are images and videos, so we're going to look at 10 methods for how to reduce that. My name is David Benheim, and I have tons of videos on PowerPoint, Excel, Google Sheets, Power BI, Teams, Zoom. If you're using tech in the workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel, and I love making new videos every week for you guys. So I'm going to open this slide, click on the picture, and go to Picture Format, and choose Compress Pictures. Compress Pics is a great tool. It's really, really handy and super quick. In fact, if you click on any picture, you untick Apply Only to this picture, and let's choose like a lower one, for example, press OK. And then I'm going to press save as, and I'm going to say small pics and press OK. And then F12 will reduce it quite substantially. Um, there are the video files that are taking up the big chunk of that. But as you can see, just in one step, I've reduced it by about 60 megabytes. By the way, if you want to get the mega tip for how to do it and check every single picture's size one by one and determine how to reduce it, then stick around for later in this video because that is my go-to method. So back to compressed pictures, a lot of people are worried that if they reduce that, then the image quality is not gonna be useful on a slideshow, but let's see that in action. So here I have a file that's just got this one picture in this one slide. So I'm gonna go picture format and then compress pictures, but I'm actually going to right click and add to quick access toolbar. So it's easier to get to without having to go to and from. So I can click on here and I'm going to choose 330. Press OK. I'm going to press Save As. So the original we'll see is 2405, and then I'm going to save as 330. And then let's see. And then if I press F12 again, I can see that it's gone down by one full megabyte. So ignore the all sizes one. We're just going to look at this one. Um, and then keep going. So let's do another one. And I will show you what difference it makes with all the sizes in slideshow mode. So here I'm going to press web 150 and then S, control S and then F12 again. And you'll see it's gone all the way down to 224, which is pretty impressive. Now you could go a little bit further, but that kind of reduces the quality. So let's see what they all look like in slideshow mode. So here I have all the sizes. I'm going to go to slideshow mode and here is the full one, 330. Can you notice a difference? Because I cannot. This is the only one, the email one, the last one, where I can notice a difference. Even between 150 and 220, which is a huge change, I couldn't really notice a difference. So um, again, you have here compressed pictures and email is the smallest one. That is a good one. Notice that you don't always get this option if your images are already quite small, then it won't show the ability to reduce them by that. But you can always see use default resolution, which will probably be the best option to do if you don't see the other ones. Otherwise, I think web is a good thing because it doesn't deteriorate from the quality in a noticeable way. If you draw it up to an absolutely huge screen, it might. But as we have seen here, it hasn't really impacted anything. So over here, we've seen uh, from 330 to 150 is such a big difference and it hasn't really changed that much. You won't see as pronounced a difference with every picture. It is different for lots of different reasons, but here we have seen that it works. There are other things that we can do for pictures as well. So um, often what happens is that people kind of shrink the picture. So if you go to picture format, reset picture and reset picture and size, you can see how it was originally. Or if you right click and choose format picture, and then size and properties and size, you can see that this is now 28% of what it usually was. So if it's 28% of what it, what it originally was, then you can make the quality 28% of what it should be without making your slide look any worse at all. So here, um, this is actually a TIF image um, and they are not as compressed as JPEGs or PNGs. So another tip for you is use PNGs or JPEGs. You have online tools that can convert them for free for you as well. So another one is if you want to crop it. So if you go to picture format and crop, then let's say we only want her face. We can do that just as so face and head like that. Perfect. 
And if you click on it again, you have compressed pictures and you have another option that says delete cropped areas of pictures. So if I click on that and then just keep use default resolution, that's going to stay as is, press OK. And then I'm going to save as, I say just the face, then F12, just the face. You can see that that's gone down actually by seven megabytes, which is quite significant. Um, no, it's not brought it to a fraction, but that's last time because we had only one picture. But here it's done that substantially. Um, if we change it to a JPEG or a PNG online, that would probably change it even more. But let's go through some more picture editing stuff. So here you can go to picture format and you have all of these ways you can edit your pictures. The issue is though, if you choose like, for example, to change the color and then maybe uh, change the artistic effects or something like this, then PowerPoint will save um, both the original and your current one so you can undo it as you need to. So you can just kind of go here and reset picture. Uh, remove background is probably the most interesting one for this because obviously here we have a single background. It's done a really good job there. PowerPoint honestly doesn't usually do that good a job. I use remove.bg for a much better experience. It's a free online website, absolutely love it. But here we've done that. And then even if we crop it, that won't actually change it with compressed pictures. What, and if I save it, it's not going to work either. Instead, I'm going to um, do this other thing and go to file and then options. And then here in advanced and image size and quality, if you tick this box, discard editing data, then it will just get rid of that. And this applies only to the file and uh, not to all files. Notice here the default resolution you can choose which one to use. So if you want yours to by default be 150, you can choose it there. Um, and then you have another option to do not compress. F12 again, and then I'm going to say discard editing, and then press save. F12 again, will put it there. There you can see that I've saved four megabytes, which is pretty good as well. So um, just some other picks, tips and tricks. If you do have lots and lots of images that were high quality and were made into one high quality image, then this can be really, really substantial. Um, and, but sometimes this you'll see is a really, really large picture. And then we'll move on to videos in a little bit. But whilst we're still on pictures, let me show you my number one tip. I absolutely love this. This is my original file, which is 165 megabytes. And what I'm gonna do is back in File Explorer, I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to paste. So I've created just a copy of that one. And then I'm going to say, individual picks. And this is great, I love this. If you change the file extension to .zip, this trick works in Excel, Word, and PowerPoint, then say yes, because ultimately these are just kind of fancy zip files. That's the way it stores data. So you right click, you double click it, PPT, and then go to media. Remember that file path, you wanna to get to media, because here you can actually get all of the pictures and you can sort them from biggest to smallest, including videos. So media is the videos, um, MP4 files, but you can see it's using TIF a lot of the time. Sometimes PNGs, those tend to be smaller, but even this one is huge and JPEGs tend to be the smallest. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and copy these and then go out of zip folder and I'm going to choose a new folder to be like pick by pick. And then I'm going to paste them. And here they are. And I'm going to, let's go to size and sort it biggest to smallest. I'm going to right click and choose view, uh, extra large icons like this, make that full screen. And here we can see this one is absolutely huge. And um, even this one, if I right click and I go to properties, this very, very plain, simple picture is 12.5 megabytes, which is insane just the flag of the Netherlands, it's just three lines that are filled and for some reason it's really, really large. And some of these other ones that we already saw here, this one is on the smaller side, but it's still pretty big. Um, so uh, what other things can we do once we know that? Well, you can one by one delete the pictures that you want. So if I know that these two are absolutely huge, if I go back in here and I just delete 
this one and this one. Obviously, if you want to keep the sentiment, you can replace them with similar pictures. But if I go to uh, remove biggest pics, this is then, then save, and then F12 again, remove biggest pics. Wow, look at that. I started here, and by just removing those two pictures, I've gone down by 30 megabytes, which is absolutely fantastic. So the next tip is how you got your media. Most people will find them on Google and then bring them in, um, but they don't realize that in the insert tab under pictures, you actually have stock images. This is thousands and thousands of images that Microsoft gives you for free. And there's new ones every month. If you click on the new tab, you can see the new ones. They're searchable. Uh, for example, you can get a panda. And then these are all the pandas, including red pandas. And a lot of them have kind of like empty space. That is great for writing text for your slides like that. So if you, you can insert as many as you want. Notice you also have videos here for stock videos. Also get new ones every month. Here's another one of a panda like that. Um, and you can insert them. If you have Office 365, you get design ideas, but these are available with Office 2021 as well. And even if you have an, an older version, you can get them from Office Online. So here we go. Uh, we can see both of them like this. These are fairly optimal in terms of file size. Obviously, you can still compress them, but they're a lot better than what you might find on Google, which might be a sort of artificially large image like we saw with the Netherlands flag earlier. Um, so another tip in the same dialog box is icons. So instead of including full images, you can get away quite a lot with icons. If I search for bear, for example, you can get there's a panda bear or there's other types of bear or I can get um, data and you can get all sorts of things like this, which lead you to getting a different kind of image. Let's choose this design idea to make it better. Now, the good thing about these icons is that PowerPoint treats them like shapes. Uh, they're kind of like SVG graphics, vector images. So you can make it super huge and it won't get any blurrier. And also the file size won't change. So you can also recolor them to anything that you want. So if you want to keep consistent branding with your colors, you can choose whatever matches your color. I usually do an outline around it, makes it nicer, I think. Or you can even recolor specific parts by clicking convert to shapes and then click on each individual element and do it or even ungroup it control shift G and then recolor individual elements as well like that so another tip is the file format so if you are saving as a PPTX then that's the best method if you save as an old style one PPT then generally your compression is not as good so highly advised to make sure you are using PPTX all right, now let's move on to videos. So with videos, you can have very, very large ones. Um, this is quite a large one of a pizza. So what you can do is you can go to file and then info, and then you have compressed media. This is the same as compress pictures. So I can say that I want to go to standard. So that might take a while to do, but here you can see that it has actually compressed them like that and you saved 58 megabytes just by doing that. So that can be pretty good. So if you click on a video, you can go to playback and you can choose to trim it. So if I trim it, say to start there and finish there, and then press okay. Now, like with um, cropping photos, when you do this, it still maintains the ability to go back and undo it. So if I click on trim video, I can still undo it. But if you go to file info, and compress media. So once you've done that, then you can see that you've saved 2.3 megabytes extra. So that's a good way of doing it. Lastly, instead of inserting a video from scratch, just insert one from YouTube. So go to insert video and then you can get online videos. And then it asks you to just paste in where to get it from. You can get it from any of these sources. So here I can just go to share and copy the link and go back to PowerPoint and then paste it and then press insert. You can make a bigger, it looks a bit blurry on the slide, but once you go into slideshow mode and play it, and it does it directly from YouTube, which is really, really awesome. All right, so that's my tips and tricks for how you can compress a file size in PowerPoint. 
predominantly using image and video compression stuff. My favorite by far is turning it into a zip file and then going one by one for which picture video is huge. So if you like this, then subscribe to my channel because I've got loads of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Power BI, Zoom Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering it on my channel. So subscribe if you want weekly videos on this kind of content. Thanks for watching.